Welcome back to McLaren Port Huron's Today's Health Program. Today I'm speaking with Dr. Clark Paul about breast cancer and treatment options. Dr. Clark Paul, before the break you talked about mammography. Can you tell us more about that now? Sure. So the thing that's very interesting, it's important for women to know, is that the American Cancer Society recently changed their guidelines for mammography. They, it used to be recommended starting at age 40 that women had annual mammograms. They changed it to age 45 and at 55 they're recommending biannual mammograms. But we get some questions regarding that. It's important for women to understand that the American College of Radiology and the American College of OBGYN have not changed their stance on when mammography should be performed. So we are still at McLaren recommending that mammograms be done starting at age 40 and be done annually um, from age 40. And sometimes I'll get questions about, well, when, when is somebody old enough they don't need to have a mammogram? And really the answer is it depends on the patient's health status. If the patient is 85 but they're very healthy and they're going to live another 10 years, then they should get a mammogram. But if they're 60 and they have multiple comorbid uh, conditions and they're not expected to live, for very long, then it doesn't make a lot of sense. So as long as you would treat based on what you find on the mammogram, I think it's reasonable to continue doing annual mammography. Um, additionally, we have our, our standard mammography, our digital mammography, and now we have a new modality called 3D mammography. 3D mammography is available at, at McLaren Port Yorn, and it is a more sensitive study, especially for dense breast. Now the advantage of that is that we have less callbacks using 3D mammography, but the disadvantage is that not all insurance companies cover that. So women should check with their insurance company if they want to have that procedure done to make sure that it's either covered or how much that they would be expected to have to pay um, if it's not covered. Once a mammogram is done, sometimes additional studies, either an ultrasound will be recommended, and another uh, imaging modality uh, called an MRI can sometimes be done to evaluate the breast. So those are other ways, diagnostic ways to evaluate the breast. How is a biopsy used to diagnose breast cancer? Well once, if, so if, if a woman uh, has an abnormal mammogram and typically what will be seen as abnormal are, are uh, abnormal calcifications or maybe they have a lump or a density that they note on the mammogram, then it's recommended that a biopsy be performed. Most biopsies are done um, minimally invasively, meaning that we do it called, it's called a stereotactic breast biopsy, where the woman actually lays on a table with her breast through an opening in the table, and then we identify the area where the abnormality is and, and we numb it up and direct a needle into that area and do a series of core biopsies. And then we'll, if it's calcifications that we're looking for, we'll take a, a radiograph of the cores, make sure we have the calcifications, and then we leave a little marker behind. Because it's, it's possible that we will have taken all of the abnormal calcifications out when we do our stereo biopsy. And if there's something abnormal when the pathologist looks at the tissue, we wouldn't know where to go to, to do our, our resection. So that's called a stereotactic core biopsy. Um, Sometimes what will happen is that it's something that can be seen well on ultrasound and we'll have the radiologist do an ultrasound guide at core biopsy. And so those almost, I would say, by far the majority of diagnoses are made before the patient would ever go to the operating room with a core biopsy. Now sometimes what will happen is we will we'll have a, a, a stereotactic biopsy that is atypical or that is of question and we have to go to the operating room to do an open biopsy. But because we can't feel the spot, we'll have the radiologist do a needle localization prior to going to the operating room and then we go to the operating room and we do an open biopsy of the area that the radiologist localized. So those are the biopsy techniques. Um, another type of biopsy that can be done but we really don't use much anymore is called a fine needle aspiration biopsy. If a woman were to come into the office and have a large palpable mass in their breast, we could take a little needle and get a sample of just cells, not core of tissue, and send that for, for pathology. The problem is that the tumor markers that we want to see 
we typically can't find on an FNA. So most of the time we can do a core biopsy of a palpable mass even right in our office. So the beautiful thing for the patient is they, most of the time they don't have to go to the operating room. Most of the time they don't have to have general anesthesia. They can drive in themselves. The core biopsy can be done relatively quickly and it's a, really a, a low morbid procedure. Now once the breast cancer is diagnosed, what are the surgical treatment options? Well surgical treatment options range from a mastectomy plus or minus reconstruction to a lumpectomy with a sentinel node biopsy, possible axillary node dissection. So uh, what used to happen, what used to be years ago standard of care was a mastectomy where the breast was removed and that was a pretty disfiguring procedure for women. And then what we found is that women had, they have actually better results if we're more conservative. And so what we can do now is called a lumpectomy in which we remove the, the tumor itself, we make an incision, remove the tumor, and then we sample the lymph nodes under the arm. And that lymph node that we want to sample is called the sentinel node or the guard node. And we, we believe that if tumor is to spread, the first place, the first node it will spread to is that guard node or sentinel node. So if we can look at that node, and if that node doesn't have tumor in it, we feel pretty good that the rest of the axilla or the lymph nodes under the arm will be free of tumor. So we have the woman receive a, a radioactive substance injected, and we actually inject here around the nipple areolar area, and then we inject a blue dye. And after we do our lumpectomy, depending where the incision is, we may, we may make a separate incision under the arm and then identify that single lymph node or maybe one or two lymph nodes and take out those nodes and then we send them to our pathologist for a frozen section evaluation. If the pathologist tells us, I don't see any tumor there, we stop our procedure. If they do see tumor, or if the tumor is bulky and palpable under the arm, we may proceed with removing the, the lower level axillary nodes. But what's really important is that we're even getting away, even with some, some studies have shown with microscopic disease in the lymph nodes, we may not have to take those lymph nodes out. So that's a whole, a whole uh, area that's in evolution right now. So those are the treatment options. Now if, if someone were to have a mastectomy and to choose to have reconstruction, then we have a plastic surgeon that they will have seen the patient before and they may opt to have immediate reconstruction and most of the time here those are done with implants. Dr. Clark Paul, this has been great information. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for watching. If you have questions, need a physician referral, or have suggestions for topics you'd like to hear more about, you can contact us by calling Health Access at 1-800-228-1484. You can also watch today's health, request a copy of our program, and access other reliable health care information by visiting our website. As always, tune in next time to Today's Health. Today's Health is brought to you by McLaren Port Huron.